हेलो माय डियर नीट वॉरियर्स वेलकम अबाउट टू द मैग्नेटिज्म एंड मैटर चैप्टर ऑफ योर ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड नीट फिजिक्स दिस लेक्चर इज पर्टिकुलरली ऑफ ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड सिलेबस बट अ ड्रॉपर स्टूडेंट कैन आल्सो वॉच दिस इफ यू वांट टू रिवाइज द कॉन्सेप्ट्स फॉर बोर्ड्स आल्सो देन आल्सो यू कैन वॉच दिस रिमेंबर आई एम गोइंग टू नॉट ओनली टीच यू द थ्योरी फ्रॉम बेसिक्स बट ऑल्सो विल बी डूइंग some amazing problems right just one second yep all right so i hope i am audible and visible to all of you welcome aboard viswa yes we'll be starting uh, or we'll be continuing 11th also in a uh, weeks or two weeks time good evening priyanka hello ritigna hello biological student welcome miss medico nice to see all of you good evening and we had a fun session yesterday on the account of teachers day if you have missed that session please watch it and we had a gala time and make sure that you are a part of the channel and you don't miss not only the fun sessions but also the academic sessions and also the time to time strategies and important notifications which you are going to get on the channel so make sure you are subscribed make sure you are a part of this family make sure you are in the avengers team all right and do me a favor by smashing the like button because it means a lot when you hit the like button when you shower your love and when you are associated with the channel thank you so much great hello nice to see you all bidisha hello shri hello ritika hello vishwa hello everyone hello ms rania hello sakti uh, yes thank you for all the wishes let's begin with the class and today we are going to start off with gauss's law in magnetism we are going to see the properties of a magnet the pole strength and other related formulas we are going to then slowly go towards a magnet kept in some field and the field due to a magnet or the energy which is there with a magnet or the potential which is there with a magnet all these concepts we are going to study related to bar magnets and then we'll go to the different magnetic properties like permeability magnetic intensity all those things and the relationships problems and then finally we'll end the class with magnetic materials and their problems like ferro dia and paramagnetism okay so this gives you a good you know heads up of what's to come ahead so stay tuned in the class with full dedication with your rough notes with your running notes so that you do not miss any pointers anyways you can always replay the session you can pause the session at any point of time that's the advantage of learning on youtube right okay so let's talk about magnets and their magnetic field and their properties only then we can understand a property called as dipole moment of a magnet one big difference between magnetic field and electric field one big difference between magnetic field and electric field is that electric field always starts from a point and ends at another point but magnetic field there is no start or end so that's one big difference that is going to lead us to the important law if you have a positive charge you have a negative charge you will see that the electric field lines always start from the positive and end at the negative charge so there is a start there is an end and this happens in electrostatics this happens in electrostatics and the line that i have shown is basically your electric is basically your electric field now one might wonder what happens in magnetism the answer is it does not start or end it is a continuous journey but then you might be like no sir i thought it originates from the north pole of a magnet and it terminates at the south pole of the magnet that is not true actually reason being even if you say that it originates from the north pole and terminates at the south pole okay it originates at the north pole and terminates at the south pole actually inside the magnet the field line continues its journey like this so you can see that actually it is not starting here or ending here it's one continuous loop so this is your magnetic field this is your magnetic field and the most important property of magnetic field is that these field lines are magnetic field b field which you call is always continuous is always continuous loops there is no start or there is no end just like in electrostatics so that is what happens in magnetism 
that is what happens in magnetism is that right everybody very very important property yep so conquer batch is the batch which is on youtube energized batch is the batch which is on the platform good evening anish hello alekya good evening hello varshita yep now that you understand this concept that magnetic field lines are always closed loops so the moment i show a magnetic field i need to make sure i end at the same point or else it will be an open uh, you know kind of a line so i can show the magnetic field line something like this i can show the magnetic field line something like this this is how a magnetic field lines look like correct perfect so this is the journey of magnetic field line now i have a question do you remember electric flux do you remember the concept of flux flux means flow of lines remember electric flux was field multiplied by area multiplied by cosine of the angle between the two things ea cos theta do you remember that it tells you how many lines are crunched piercing through a given cross section so that is the you know quantity which refers to as flux correct same way what will be a magnetic flux imagine you have a area this is some area this is the area vector through that area vector just or through that particular surface maybe maybe this is this is how the magnetic field lines are going through it this is how the magnetic field lines are going through it something like this maybe there is an angle theta between them because these field lines are piercing through the area there is a quantity called as magnetic flux there is a quantity called as magnetic flux this magnetic flux is directly proportional to the number of magnetic field lines b field lines piercing through it piercing piercing through that particular area piercing through that particular area more the field lines more is the flux less the field lines less is the flux if the field lines go from the top or from the bottom without cutting through it without piercing through it then there is no flux then there is no flux the formula for magnetic flux i just put this b to symbolize that listen baba i am talking about magnetic flux i am not talking about electric flux so that b stands for magnetic field nothing else then the formula will be very similar to very similar to electric flux formula come on i want all the students put up the answer in the chat box guess the answer just like electric flux was ea cos theta magnetic flux will be magnetic field into area into cosine of the angle between these two vectors which you can also write it as b vector dot a vector so that is the formula for magnetic flux something which you should be aware of something which you should know very simple if you compare and remember it field into area into cosine of the angle between them now if you talk about the unit if you talk about the unit okay if you talk about the unit of magnetic flux you can see field is in tesla this is in tesla area is in meter square so this is meter square that is called as a weber that is called as a weber so you can also see one tesla is one weber one weber upon one meter square one meter square so tesla is weber per meter square or weber is tesla meter square this is for magnetic flux only do not use weber as a unit for electric flux that will be uh, ridiculous okay it is only and only for magnetic flux keep that in mind we have discussed about electric flux in the electricity chapter cool so that is the unit of magnetic flux obviously it is a scalar quantity you can see why because it is a dot product so it is obviously a scalar quantity because there is a dot over there or it's a scalar product keep this in mind now that we have defined magnetic flux and we have also seen the property that magnetic field is always in closed loops unlike electrostatics where it starts and ends magnetic field lines are always closed loops we will combine both these things for our benefit to define something called as gauss law in magnetism to define something called as gauss law in magnetism so what is this gauss law in magnetism 
Gauss's law in magnetism. Very, very simple statement, my dear students. If I show magnetic field lines, maybe it goes like this. Okay. Maybe like this. Some object is creating this magnetic field. It could be any kind of magnet, doesn't matter. I just know magnetic field lines are closed loops. Now, if these are your magnetic field lines, I take a closed surface. Just imagine this. I am taking a closed surface. Maybe this is my closed surface. Maybe this is my closed surface. This is my closed surface. Can you see there are some field lines entering in? Can you see there are some field lines coming out? Field lines which enter in contribute to negative flux. Field lines which come out contribute to positive flux. So over here, I can clearly, clearly see that there are some field lines entering in. That means there is negative flux. You can also see some field lines are coming out. That means there is also positive flux. Can you guys think and tell me if I ask you what is the total flux through that closed surface, through that closed surface, there will be the contribution of the positive flux, contribution of the negative flux. Will they be same in magnitude and opposite in sign or not? Will they be same in magnitude and opposite in sign or not? Think about it. Yes, these are SI units, Jyoti. Both of them, both of them will be equal and opposite in sign. Do you know why? See, no. How many lines are coming in? 1, 2, 3. How many lines are going out? 1, 2, 3. No new line can start. Remember, that is the property of magnetic flux or field. No new line can start. No line existing can end. So whatever comes in has to go out. Just like a student who comes inside the school has to go outside the school. It will be very weird. Suddenly, a new student is coming out of the school on one fine day. Or one student went in and did not come out. That will be, no, that will be bad. So that is not what is supposed to happen. Whatever goes in should come out. So do you see that the total flux will be basically zero because the positive and the negative basically they cancel out each other. They are equal but opposite in sign. So that is nothing but Gauss's law of magnetism. The total flux, the total flux of a closed surface is always going to be zero. In, uh, you know, in other words, you can also write it like this. Instead of putting phi, you can also put magnetic field dot area vector, but small, 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 small areas. You count all the flux throughout the surface that means you are adding up all the fluxes throughout that closed surface this answer will always be zero you can compare this with you can compare this with electrostatics gauss law their electric field dot da was not zero it was the net charge inside by epsilon naught net charge inside by epsilon naught here this zero says on the right hand side what does this zero communicate or what does this zero tell you? That the net, net magnetic charge is always going to be zero. Net magnetic charge inside any closed surface will always be a big fat zero. You can never have more north poles than south poles. You can never have more south poles than north poles. If I take 10 pandus, there will be 10 champas. If I take 20 pandus, there will be 20 champas. It will never happen that the pairing does not, uh, you know, happen. There are excess pandus or excess champas. So the North Pole amount is equal to the South Pole amount. Always, no matter which surface you take. Okay, this basically tells, this basically tells because the net magnetic charge is zero. That means the North Pole, the North Pole uh, and south pole are equal in amount are equal in amount this means in magnetism only dipoles exist only only dipoles exist only dipoles exist monopoles don't exist you cannot have one pandu standing somewhere waiting for champa 
और वन चंपा स्टैंडिंग समवेयर वेटिंग फॉर पांडू नॉट हैपनिंग इफ देर इज पांडू देर इज चंपा इफ देर इज चंपा देर इज पांडू इट्स ऑलवेज अ पेयर डाई पोल बोथ द पोलैरिटीज आर देर अंडरस्टूड यस और नो एवरी वन विद मी ऑन दिस परफेक्ट हो क्लियर हो विल बी कंप्लीटिंग वेरी सोन प्रियंका बाय ऑक्टोबर और समथिंग ये Yep, yep. So, uh, basically, uh, you will find my practice sessions, mocks, everything in the energized batch. If you are a part of it, you will get DPPs. You will be getting the material plus the mock test of all the chapters. Okay, so that's where you get it. Perfect. So, this means if I have a magnet, I got one idea. I mean, you would also thought about this in the childhood. If I have a magnet, what if I break it? what if i break it into two parts then i will get then i will get north pole separate and south pole separate is it will i get south pole and north pole separate is that what you think will happen no that's not what is going to happen no matter what you take if you draw a closed surface anywhere there should be equal amount of north and south so if there is north here if i just draw a surface only on this part there will be equal amount of south pole so you will see instantly there are instantly you will see that there is a south pole here actually and this is a north pole these are the new polarities created actually it was there from before just that you didn't see it if you further try to break this if you further try to break this magnet okay so if you further try to break this magnet right this south will be there this north obviously will be there as it is you will see one more south being formed over here and one more north being formed here if you continue this process even till an atom even that atom will have north pole and south pole even if you break that atom into small small parts maybe protons and electrons separate each electron will also have a north polarity and south polarity so basically you cannot isolate the poles so what does this tell you you can't you can't isolate you can't isolate the polarities or poles you cannot get them separately impossible that's how strong pandu champa bond is that's how strong north south bond is i hope your bond is also going to be that strong with me in this avenger team because if only the bond is strong will you be able to succeed will you be able to grasp everything will you be able to have that faith that trust and we will work synchronously right so that is a very very important thing that you should know you cannot separate the poles now every magnet has two polarities one north pole and one south pole so it is a dipole so i can say that a bar magnet a bar magnet is nothing but a magnetic a magnetic dipole and every a dipole has a dipole strength so what is the strength of such a bar magnet which is nothing but a magnetic dipole well see this my dear students if i show this as our bar magnet this is the north pole this is the south pole let's say the north polarity and the south polarity is separated by a distance of l is separated by a distance of l the charge the charge of the magnetic pole i can call it as small m or some books use it as q subscript m both are fine this stands for the pole strength strength of the polarity strength of the north pole or the south pole like you have positive negative charge 5 coulomb 10 coulomb less coulomb more coulomb same way the north pole can be strong or weak south pole can be strong or weak so that is a strength of the pole or pole strength so you can call this as the pole strength pole strength or you can also call it as the magnetic charge magnetic charge it is not in coulombs please understand obviously it is not going to be in coulombs because it is not creating electric field it is creating magnetic field so this side will be basically plus qm left side will be basically minus qm right side and left side both will be opposite but equal in magnitude that's why it is a dipole so how do we define the magnetic dipole moment how will we define the magnetic magnetic dipole moment magnetic dipole 
moment. The magnetic dipole moment will be basically the pole strength will basically be the pole strength multiplied by the separation multiplied by how much is the distance between those two polarities. So if I use the symbol capital M for magnetic dipole moment, it will be the pole strength. Either you can use plus QM or minus QM uh, that Q with subscript M or you can use the small m symbol. Anything is fine. So let me stick with Q subscript M into the separation, which is basically L. So this becomes your formula. This becomes your formula for magnetic dipole moment magnetic dipole moment keep this in mind this is a vector quantity yes it is a vector quantity always it goes from south to north not north to south it always goes from south to north keep this in mind so it's a vector quantity it's a vector quantity always goes from south always goes from south towards the north i know you guys are thinking sir what is the unit of magnetic dipole moment Hold on, I'll come to it. Hold on, right? Do you remember one thing? That if I have a coil, if I have a coil carrying, coil carrying current, doesn't that also have its magnetic moment, which we have studied? Haven't we studied? You use your right hand rule. The current is going like this. So then there is a magnetic dipole moment given by the number of turns into the current in it into the area nia national investigation agency that is the trick to remember that any current carrying coil behaves like an electromagnet that is the dipole moment strength nia very good mickey exactly perfecto now the real question is what is the unit of m using this formula can you guess the unit can you guess the unit of dipole moment unit of dipole moment using this formula come on think about it n is unitless it's number of turns current is nothing but amperes area is nothing but meter square so this is ampere meter square is the unit of magnetic dipole moment that means you can think as if there is a north polarity here there is a south polarity here and you can visualize as if a bar magnet can replace that current carrying coil. So instead of that electromagnet, you can put a bar magnet behaves exactly the same way, having the same magnetic moment. So if you compare, if you compare the units now, it will be very easy because this I know has the unit of, this I know has a unit of ampere meter square. So therefore, therefore, if this left hand side is ampere meter square this magnetic charge which i do not know what is the unit okay magnetic charge i don't know what is the unit of it right into basically length length is nothing but in meters so therefore the unit unit of pole strength unit of the pole strength or magnetic charge pole strength or the magnetic charge will be ampere meter ampere meter how many of you got this for pole strength right this was ampere meter square this was meter 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 cancelled ampere meter is the unit of the magnetic pole strength is that clear everyone Paka. awesome now that this much is clear what would happen if i if i take two magnets and place them together say for example i took this magnet okay i took this magnet this is north let's say this is south and i placed it with this magnet like this this is north this is south can i replace them with one single magnet will they have one resultant magnetic moment the answer is yes how this is a magnet so it will have its own dipole moment like this from south to north let's say i call it as m let's say i call it as m this magnet has its own magnetic moment this magnet which is horizontal will also have its own magnetic moment like this let's say the magnets are equal in size similar materials everything so both will be m and m and m is a vector quantity m is a vector quantity so what will happen they will have a resultant magnetic moment like this using triangle law using triangle law of vector addition triangle law of 
वेक्टर एडिशन यू कैन यूज पैरलोग्राम यू कैन यूज द फॉर्मुलाज आई जे के वट एवर यू वॉन्ट बेसिकली दे आर वैक्टर्स सो दिस वुड बी द नेट मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट दिस वुड बी द नेट मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट इन दिस केस बिकॉज द एंगल बिटवीन दैम बिकॉज द एंगल बिटवीन दैम इज नाइंटी डिग्री एंगल बिटवीन दैम इज नाइंटी डिग्री कैन यू गाइज गेस वॉट विल बी एम नेट यूजिंग पाइथोगरस इट विल बी एम स्क्वायर प्लस एम स्क्वायर रूट सो इट विल बी बेसिकली एम रूट टू सो दैट वुड बी द रिजल्टेंट मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट इज दैट मेकिंग सेंस एवरी वन एक्सैक्टली इट्स अ वैक्टर क्वांटिटी वेरी गुड वेरी गुड ऑसम बेटी आई डेंट मीन दैट देर इज अ सपरेट बैट जस्ट फॉर Uh, you know test time uh, you know a dpb discussion or the problem solving it's a part of the energized batch which is the paid batch on the an academy platform okay so in the in that batch only everything is comprehensive be test discussion problem solving theory in detailed discussions whatever happens happens in that batch you get assignments everything in that okay there is no separate batch just for discussions now what would happen my dear students If I take both the magnets in this manner, south pole, south pole, north pole, north pole. If each has magnetic moment m, can you guys guess? As a whole, what will be their magnetic moment? As a whole, what will be their magnetic moment? Both the south poles will behave like one big south pole. Both the north poles will behave like one big north pole. So the total magnetic moment will be basically two m. Agreed or disagreed? Agreed or disagreed? Understood. very nice similarly if i take this magnet like this south north and this as south north this way what will happen imagine both of them have magnetic moment m both the magnetic moments will cancel each other both the magnetic moments will cancel each other because one is right one is left so the net magnetic moment will be a big fat zero there will be a big fat zero very good excellent so depending on how you arrange the magnets so in this case it was parallel here it was anti parallel here it was perpendicular you will see that the net magnetic moment will change use the laws or the concepts of vectors that's the main point now imagine you have a magnet like this this is your north pole this is your south pole this is plus qm this is minus qm and the separation between them is basically l separation between them is basically l now there are two ways for me to cut the magnet one way is i cut it like this when i cut it like this then i will get two magnets in this particular manner just one second so this will be south i'll get an induced north and this part again over here like this this will be induced south and this will be north each of this magnet will have a length of l by 2 assuming we are dividing into equal halves but you know what will not change that is the pole strength so this will still be minus qm this will be plus qm this will be again minus this will be again plus so the strength of the polarities remains the same but only the magnetic length will reduce only the magnetic length will reduce is that making sense everyone with me very good similarly similarly if you cut the bar magnet like this then what will happen if you cut the bar magnet in this particular fashion observe carefully my dear students observe carefully okay so i've cut it like this now the magnetic length will still remain the same the length will not get affected but you know what will get affected when you cut it like this along the axis of the magnet not laterally this was lateral cut this is axial cut along the axis you will see the north pole and the south pole will be divided into smaller parts so here you will see plus qm by 2 so this is plus qm by 2 here it will be minus qm by 2 minus qm by 2 so the pole strength has reduced exactly pole strength has reduced very good mikim jays awesomeness perfecto but you know what will happen common in both of them what will be common in both of them observe this if i say that this guy's magnetic dipole moment is capital m which is just qm into l 
दिस गाइज मैग्नेटिक डायपोल मोमेंट दिस गाइज मैग्नेटिक डायपोल मोमेंट इफ आई ट्राई टू कैलकुलेट इट इन दिस केस इट विल बी जस्ट क्यू एम बट इन टू एल बाई टू दैट मीन इट इज कैपिटल एम बाई टू इट हैज बिकम हाफ वेन यू कट इट लाइक दिस इट हैज बेसिकली बिकम हाफ इफ यू कट इट लाइक दिस देन वॉट विल हैपन टू द मैग्नेटिक डायपोल मोमेंट देन वॉट विल हैपन टू द मैग्नेटिक डायपोल मोमेंट द मैग्नेटिक स्ट्रेंथ इज क्यू एम बाई टू लेंथ इज स्टिल एल सो इट इज अगेन इफ यू सी कैपिटल एम बाई टू सो इन बोथ द केसेस द डायपोल मोमेंट विल रेड्यूस बाय द सेम अमाउंट assuming you are dividing it equally but in this case the strength remains the same the length reduces that's why the dipole moment reduces whereas in this situation when you cut it along the axis the strength of the pole reduces but the length remains the same so that is the reason why the dipole moment reduces so two different reasons producing the same effect two different reasons producing the same effect very good exactly perfect so i think now you have a fair idea of how to you know uh, get the dipole moment how to join the magnetic moments how to separate the magnetic moments what is the magnetic moment and all of these things cool chalo let's do some questions based on this let's do some questions here is the uh, first question coming up on your screen which of the following statement is not correct about the magnetic field which of the following statement is not correct about the magnetic field inside the magnet the lines go from north pole to south pole tangents to the magnetic field lines give the direction of the magnetic field the magnetic lines form a closed loop or the magnetic field lines of force do not cut each other some of you are saying option a is that so let's figure it out yes guys the correct answer is option a proud of you my dear warriors the following statement which is not correct very important do not forget this word not correct if you notice inside the magnet the lines go from north pole to south pole that is wrong actually if this is north this is south you will notice that the magnetic field outside goes from north to south but inside it goes from south to north south to north so this is wrong it was not supposed to be north to south it was supposed to be from south to north so that is the wrong thing let's see if you guys can figure out what might be what might be the answer for this although i have not given you the formula but use some logic use some logic and give me the answer the intensity of the magnetic field due to an isolated pole m at distance r from it will be proportional to i'll give you a hint i will give you a hint the hint is like this the hint is like this electric field electric field due to a point charge what was it my dear students 1 by 4 pi epsilon not the charge divided by r square this was due to a point charge why should it be different in magnetism the formulas look very identical just the symbols will change instead of electric field it will be magnetic field instead of magnetic uh, sorry instead of electric uh, charge it will be magnetic charge distance will remain distance only permittivity will become permeability that's all so can you guess now what should be the formula can you guess now what should be the formula yes many of you got it correct it will be m by r square so my dear warriors the magnetic field due to a single polarity will be mu not by 4 pi into the pole strength divided by r square you can clearly see it is proportional to m by r square so hence that is the answer okay in fact you can write all other formulas just like this say for example say for example imagine that you have you have a north pole here south pole here another magnet is there okay this south pole and north pole is there this is minus q1 this is plus q1 okay this is plus q2 let's say this is minus q2 and let's say i am interested to find the force between these two charges or two poles this north pole and this south pole if you only consider this if you only consider this they will attract each other they will attract each other with some force that force will be given by instead of 1 by 4 pi epsilon it will be mu not by 4 pi where mu not is the permeability and here you will have q1 q2 
divided by the distance might be r let's say so r square this is the magnitude of the force same formula just that instead of uh, you know uh, electrical charge these are magnetic charges the polarity strengths that's all everything else is the same same way these two will also have potential energy the magnetic potential energy will be given by mu naught by 4 pi q1 q2 divided by what r square no this will be r so that will be the magnetic potential energy so you can see if you know one chapter you can study the other chapter you don't have to break your head and study it separately waste many days because you have spent that quality time in understanding electrostatics if you have not spent that time please watch my lectures it is there on the channel watch it in detail take some time and cover up your backlogs all the lectures i have explained it beautifully taken enough time to explain all the concepts required for your neat exam cool let's go to the next one coming up on your screen this was asked in previous years out of the following figures arrangements for the bar magnets okay which configuration do you think is the net magnetic moment highest net magnetic moment the highest come on think about it very very easy peasy lemon squeezy question actually in this situation one magnetic pole uh, sorry one magnetic dipole is here one magnetic dipole is here in this case one is like this the other one is like this in fact here the net will be zero in this case the net will come out to be here in this case both the dipoles are arranged at 30 degrees so the net will be somewhere over here all right the net will be somewhere over here and in this case in this case if you notice uh, south to north i think yeah this is 60 degrees that's all the angle has changed the angle has changed so now this will be the net magnetic dipole moment can you guys guess now in which situation do you think the net dipole moment will be the highest net dipole moment will be the highest it's like asking you what angle should i keep between the vectors out of these cases so that the resultant is highest where do you think 90 degree obviously this can't be the answer b is obviously eliminated because it is zero either it is 90 30 or 60 what do you think is the answer what do you think is the answer jyoti saying c bhartan also saying c is that so Pakka, confirm, lock. Very good, yaar. C, you should not say. You should always say C for captain, sir. C for capto. Yes, the correct answer is capto. Why do you think it is 30 degree? Because the closer the vectors are, their addition, their resultant, their cumulative effect will become stronger. If the vectors are far away, then the resultant will be weak. The more the vectors are close, they will help each other. They will assist each other. They will produce a larger, you know, a resultant so hence 30 degrees is the answer not this not this perfect is that making sense clear -oh? let's go ahead to the next one okay now this is a very interesting question because here there was a bar magnet and you have turned it made it into a curved magnet question is what is the new magnetic dipole moment very interesting so let's draw the previous diagram although it is not there in the question here the length would have been l okay this would have been north pole this would have been south pole it would have its own magnetic moment which would be q into l which would be just q into l now the moment you turn it curve it it becomes an arc the arc length will be l because the same magnet has been bent into like this shape so can i say that the arc length the arc length is basically l what is the length of an arc of a circle of radius r i think i will need that radius to solve the problem okay the included angle is 60 degree arc length come on guys is the included angle divided by 360 correct into into 2 pi r that will be basically your l 60 goes with 366 6 times 2 by 6 is basically 3 so therefore r will be 3 l divided by pi 3 goes on the top pi comes below so that is the radius of this circle of uh, which this arc is made of cool make sense okay now what do i do with radius see observe carefully this is that north pole this is the south pole can you guys figure out what is the distance between them because that is the new magnetic length 
new length between them that is the new magnetic length between them the north pole and the south pole only then i can figure out what is the net magnetic moment the new magnetic moment so how do i find out this length well look at this this is 60 degree very very simple this is 60 degree this is r this is also r this is 60 naturally this should be also r because it is an equilateral triangle it is an equilateral triangle wow done so i now know what is the new what is the new magnetic moment it is the same north pole that means same charge the length now is basically r so instead of r you can put it as 3l by pi which you can also write as 3 by pi into ql you just know q into l is m so it will be 3m by pi 3m by pi which is nothing but option c very good very nice very nice 2 pi r over 6 yes jyoti 2 pi r over 6 because this will be 1 6th of a circle 60 degrees is 1 6th of 360 degrees so this arc length will be the original bar magnets length using that i found the radius of the circle from the radius i found the separation between the polarities so whenever bending problem comes remember find the new length once you get the new length you can compare using the formulas and write it in terms of the old magnetic moment always yeah is there any general formula for these questions see don't try to remember general formulas like this because uh, what if it is not made into a circle what if it is made into a l shaped hey, na? what will you do then or what if a part of it is bent and some parts are kept straight so things can change so that's why don't try to buy hard a general formula that will unnecessarily add more pressure on you to buy hard some special cases many teachers do that i find it very ridiculous okay how can you buy hard each and every special case or each and every problems formula which was numerical you convert it into variables so that is not how you study physics then you lose the fun out of it and it's not needed i mean examiner gives you enough time to solve it by this method trust me on this there will be many questions which you can solve it fast some questions you can solve it slow because it's lengthy but this is not a slow question or a fast question it is an average question it will take one minute or so cool let's go on to the next question on your screen now a bar magnet of moment m is cut equally along the axis and placed one after the other with opposite poles in contact the new magnetic moment i think this is direct i want everybody spamming the answer i want everybody spamming the answer i mean you cannot get this wrong imagine this draw this both the magnets cut equally along the axis placed one after the other with the opposite polarities in contact one after the other keep that in mind 0 m m by 2 or 2 m some people are saying 0 some people are saying m by 2 capto is the answer is that so the correct answer is m only see you guys got tricked into this question you guys got tricked into this question actually it was so simple i'll tell you how this is let's say south pole this is let's say north pole how do you cut the magnet equally along the axis so basically you have cut it equally along the axis like this so this will be south pole by two south pole by two this will be north pole by two north pole by two so if this original magnetic moment was m each one will be m by 2 m by 2 now what have you done you have taken both these magnets and placed it one after the other you have placed it basically one after the other where opposite polarities are in contact that means if this is south this is north this is south this is north this is how it has been arranged this is how it has been arranged did you understand can you see how the polarities opposite are in contact one after the other they have been arranged now each of them each of them has a magnetic moment m by 2 and m by 2 so the total magnetic moment will be how much it will be m it will be just m that's all so that's the answer which is m it was just a trick question i told you it is very simple you will be able to solve it easily but you can make many many silly mistakes in this many people think opposite polarities so cancel without even thinking no that's not correct yep 
ऑसम ऑसम गॉट इट परफेक्ट लेट्स गो ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑन योर स्क्रीन नाउ वाउ वी हैव अ बार मैग्नेट दर इज अ क्यूबॉइड शेप सर्फेस इट्स अ क्लोज सर्फेस सो वॉट इज अ फ्लक्स थ्रू द क्लोज सर्फेस रिमेम्बर दैट सर्फेस इज ड्रॉन ओवर द नॉर्थ पोल एंड द क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज द टोटल फ्लक्स इन दैट क्लोज सर्फेस इज इट पॉजिटिव इज इट नेगेटिव इज इट जीरो और इट डिपेंड्स रिमेम्बर फ्लक्स इज पॉजिटिव इफ द फील्ड लाइन्स कम आउट ऑफ इट फ्लक्स इज नेगेटिव If the field lines go into it, it is zero. If nothing comes in or goes out, or equal number goes in and goes out, and it could be depends ba basically on how you sh how much is the size, where you have drawn the cube, and all of that. Come on, it's already done. Game. I did a special class on derivatives and integration, and there was a session called Fun with Graphs. Please watch that session. okay just exclusively on graphs it was done long time back last month only or maybe in july only okay game okay captain is the answer is that so i think you guys are correct definitely you guys are correct because this is nothing but gauss's law this is nothing but your gauss law of magnetism it says no matter which surface you take cube cuboid pyramid cylinder sphere whatever the moment it is a closed surface the answer should be zero for the flux and the thing to notice over here although from the north pole there are field lines going out there are equal number of field lines there are equal number of field lines which are also entering in from this side so whatever comes in goes out so the net flux will be zero so don't worry about it great so beautiful questions lot of concepts and i'm pretty sure this has now been ingrained has been fixed all right permanently in your head so now let's go to the next aspect next aspect so what is the next aspect that is the field and the potential due to a magnet because magnet is made of polarities these poles will create some field will create some potential how much is the field and the potential now that you know a magnetic dipole formulas are very similar to electrical dipole formulas shouldn't the formulas which we have studied back then be also applicable here be it electric dipole or magnetic dipole field and potential formulas there is also applicable here you don't have to break your head just change the variables everything else remains the same so let's first define the terminologies if this is the polarities and if i tell you if i tell you listen this is the magnetic dipole moment then i can just say this is basically the axis this is what the axis or this is basically the axial position of that magnet remember this is nothing but the axial position of the magnet similarly similarly i can say this particular position if you split the magnet into two equal halves like this this is basically your equatorial position equatorial position of the magnet now let's say for example you are okay let's say for example you are standing at some point maybe over here so there will be a position vector okay maybe i can just show it like this this is your position vector like that okay perfect and that position vector makes some angle with the magnetic dipole makes some angle with the magnetic dipole everybody is able to see this and at any point if you want to travel you can change the value of r or theta for example you want to be on the axis make the value of theta as 0 immediately that point will come down over here or you make the value of theta as 180 if you make theta as 180 that point will go over here you are on the axis but on the other side if you put theta as 90 or minus 90 90 or minus 90 you will see you will be on the equatorial position does that make sense everyone with me on this yep now if i am not on the axis nor on the equator not on the axis not on the equator any general point then what is the formula for the field or potential you can clearly see that the field lines will go from north come to the south go from north come to the south so the field lines are going like this so maybe at this particular point 
maybe at this particular point this is the magnetic field this is that magnetic field that magnetic field is making some angle with the position vector that magnetic field is given by instead of 1 by 4 pi epsilon i will use mu naught by 4 pi mu naught by 4 pi instead of electrical dipole moment i will use magnetic dipole moment r cube will remain r cube and here that formula was remember 3 cos square theta plus 1 under the root so this becomes the field strength formula <coughs> at any general point at any general point similar to electrostatics i'm so glad cm ahmed you enjoyed it okay aswati make sure you watch my lectures every day day in day out and uh, follow this channel as you study and as you see others studying you too will be motivated so the most important thing is you know to stay in a company which is motivated to stay with teachers and students who are like-minded and who want to crack the examination that is the number one thing so the next thing is what is the angle made by the field with the position vector the formula for that is tan alpha which is entire tan theta divided by 2 that is the formula for that you can see for special cases what will happen what will happen for those special cases say for example at axial position so at axial position at axis theta is basically 0 or basically 180 degrees so the magnetic field on the axis you can try it out magnetic field on the axis you can try it out if you put cos of 0 cos 0 is 1 3 plus 1 is 4 4 is under the root root of 4 is 2 so this will become mu naught by 4 pi 2m by r cube if you remember something like this also happened in electrostatics on axis it was twice the dipole moment uh, the formula wise similarly at the equator also you can do the same thing all right at the equator also you can do the same thing so at equator at equator right theta will be either plus or minus 90 degree no matter whether you put cos 90 or cos minus 90 answer will be zero so 3 into 0 is 0 0 plus 1 1 1 is under the root root of 1 is also 1 so hence the magnetic field on the equator will be just mu naught by 4 pi into m by r cube that's all you can see this field is weaker than this field in fact this is twice of the field on the equator the field on the axis is twice the field on the equator same thing was there in electrostatics how many of you remember how many of you remember this yep very good if you remember this now similarly you can also write down the formula for magnetic potential at that point the magnetic potential at that point will be given by mu naught by 4 pi m cos theta but instead of r cube it is r square so that is the formula my dear students v is mu naught by 4 pi m cos theta by r square so that is the formula for magnetic potential magnetic potential and you can verify that for both these things so the magnetic potential on the axis magnetic potential on the axis so just substitute theta as 0 uh, or 180 so you will see you will get the answer as mu naught by 4 pi and here you will have m by r square either it will be plus or minus plus will be for 0 degree and minus will be for 180 degree because cos 180 is minus 1 cos 0 is plus 1 so that's why that both plus and minus sign okay depends which side you are are you closer to the north then it is positive if you are closer to the south on that side then negative so 0 180 decides the sign make sense okay similarly you can also do the same thing for uh, equatorial position it is actually very simple on the equator if you notice what happens cos of 90 or cos of minus 90 is a big fat zero so that's it no matter where you go the answer is zero because if you go on this blue line you are equidistant from both the poles so how much ever potential north will give same potential south will give both of them will cancel out each other is that right Satya, you can go back and uh, catch up at 2 x speed uh, to the current location right so make sure you watch the previous part as well cool so that was the field and potential due to a magnet now 
what will happen if you place a magnet in somebody else's field just like you take a magnetic needle everybody would have seen a compass how many of you have seen a compass have you seen a compass magnetic needle in real life you would have seen that if for example if for example this is the north direction example this is the north direction you will see the magnetic north on this will immediately try to go over here that means there will be a torque acting on it there will be a torque acting on it till that needle till that needle aligns perfectly in that north south direction till that needle perfectly aligns itself in that north south direction here there is no torque acting on it this is also like a small magnet placed in the earth's magnetic field that magnetic field can come from earth or some other strong magnet doesn't matter the concept remains the same the concept is if the needle or the dipole is not aligned with the field then there will be a torque if it is aligned then there will be no torque acting on it it will just stay there as it is is that right everyone great so my dear warriors over here over here just one second hmm. yeah so if i have a magnet like this let's say this is north pole let's say this is south pole let's say i call this as its magnetic moment let's say i call this as its magnetic moment and it is placed in some external field this is your external magnetic field this is your external magnetic field and there is some angle between them then there will be definitely a torque acting on it there will be definitely a torque acting so the torque the torque on the magnet magnet due to the external field due to the external field is just given by torque is m cross b just like it was p cross e electric dipole moment cross electric field here it is magnetic dipole moment cross magnetic field so magnitude wise it is just m b sine of theta very very similar looking formula was there in electrostatics same way same way you can also type you can also write the magnetic energy magnetic potential energy the magnetic the magnetic energy stored in it because it is placed in somebody else's field it tries to rotate behaves like a spring so there is some energy stored that is u that will be minus minus sorry minus m dot b there is a dot product and there is a minus sign many people forget that minus sign so it is minus m b cos theta that is the magnetic energy stored in it minus m dot b keep this also in mind very good perfect so this is a torque acting on the magnet this is the energy stored in that magnet placed in somebody else's field there are few special cases which you must must remember what are those special cases let me type it for you say the magnetic moment is like this then like this then like this this is the magnetic moment and your external field is like this then like this and then like this basically i have taken all the cases you can notice over here that theta is basically zero here theta is basically 90 degrees and here theta is basically 180 degrees can you guys guess in this situation what will be the torque when theta is zero can you guess what will be the torque because torque is mb sin theta sin zero will be zero so torque will be also zero so this torque will be zero over here is that making sense everyone okay what about this what will be the torque in this situation when angle is 180 when north and uh, or the magnetic moment is opposite to the external field again sin 180 is zero so this will be also zero very good in this case the torque will be mb sin 90 sin 90 is 1 
so this is the maximum value of the torque you cannot get more torque than this situation when it is perpendicular you get maximum torque any other angle you get torque lesser than that make sense yep great now what about the energy electric uh, sorry magnetic potential energy or the magnetic energy stored in this case using this formula minus mb cos theta minus mb cos theta observe what will happen minus mb cos zero cos zero is one so won't the energy be minus mb in this case if you notice theta is 90 cos 90 is zero so won't the energy be zero in this situation the energy will be minus mb cos 180 cos 180 is minus one minus one into minus will become positive so won't it be just plus mb understood so out of these situations where is the energy maximum it is maximum over here it is maximum energy over here but where is it minimum many people say this no this is not the answer this is the minimum value because negative is less than zero right so this is where it is minimum is that making sense to all of you and the final conclusion this particular situation where theta was 180 torque was zero energy was maximum torque is not there it is in equilibrium and energy is maximum obviously it is unstable so this is the situation of unstable equilibrium this is the situation of unstable equilibrium if you look at this scenario my dear students the torque is zero no torque means equilibrium but the energy wise it is least so it is very stable lower energy means stable so this is nothing but the situation of stable equilibrium stable equilibrium if you ask me what is this is this any equilibrium answer is no because torque is there whenever torque forces are there then it is no longer in equilibrium equilibrium means rotation wise and translation wise it should be experiencing net force or net torque to be zero so here there is torque so this is not even an equilibrium only these two situations are equilibrium is that okay everyone with me on this perfect perfect chalo let's do some questions we'll come to this later on i don't know why this slide has come here okay so let's start with this particular uh, question coming up on your screen a bar magnet of magnetic moment m is placed in external field of b the torque exerted on it is i think everybody should spam shout and tell me the answer post the answer two three four times come on guys i want to see how many of you were paying attention to the theory part torque torque is a vector even if you do not know the formula by common sense you will eliminate c b and d because how can it be a dot product Tor torque is a cross product always it's a vector quantity so it has to be option a uh, nothing else can match also and anyways that is the true formula also m cross b perfect moving on to the next question there is a magnet of length some three centimeter there are two points this magnet is of three centimeter small magnet is there you stand 24 centimeters away from it first time second time you start for, uh, stand 48 centimeters away from it how much will be the ratio of the magnetic fields at these points yep come on my dear students it's a very straightforward question how much is the basically ratio of the magnetic moments if you remember both the points are actually axial if you can see also this and this both are on the axis and the magnetic field on the axis is just given by mu naught by 4 pi 2m divided by r cube so magnetic field is inversely proportional to the cube of the distance inversely proportional to the cube of the distance so clearly magnetic field at point a upon magnetic field at point b will be r b by r a whole cube whole cube b is at 48 48 centimeters a is at 24 a is at 24 so this is basically 2 cube that means it is 8 is to 1 so the answer will be 8 times of the previous one or the other one so answer is a perfect how many of you gave the answer very good anish 
वेदांजनी वेरी गुड अवीन या वेरी गुड नवीन जानवी प्रियंका रतिग्ना नीट क्वेस्ट वेरी गुड नवीन वेरी गुड जानवी ऑसम विदिशा That's the correct answer. So the formula used is this, and the proportionality is used that the field is inversely proportional to the cube, not square. Many people think of it as square, and they give the answer as c, which is four. No, there is a cube in the formula, so that makes it eight and not four. Look at this question: two magnets perpendicular to each other. Interesting. Two magnets perpendicular to each other. The question is, what is the field? What is the field and potential due to both of them at a comma zero? First, let me mark that point. A comma zero will be over here. Okay. What will be the magnetic field at that particular point? You know what to do in this situation. Find the field due to this and this separately, and then find the resultant. Find the potential due to this and this separately, and then find the total potential. So treat it at treat it like two separate problems for both the magnets, and then join them together. okay let's do it one by one observe carefully observe carefully if i look at this magnet all right if i look at this magnet can you see that this point is actually on the equator so if this has some basically magnetic moment m then for this magnet aren't you on the equator so the field will go like that go like this and come here so and the equator i think the magnetic field will be like this so i will use the magnetic field on the equator formula which is nothing but mu not by 4 pi mu not by 4 pi m by distance is just a so a cube so that is the magnetic field at that particular point everybody with me perfecto cool next important thing what is the potential at that point the magnetic potential on the equator is always zero recollect because you are equidistant from north pole and south pole on the equator so both the polarities give same potential opposite sign they cancel net potential is zero so this magnet is done this magnet is done and dusted very good so what do you do next take the other magnet what is the other magnet let's see this is that other magnet dipole moment is like this so when you are on the axis the field goes like that comes like this so on the axis the field is parallel to the magnetic dipole moment so due to that the field will be like this on the axis field will be like this on the axis how much will be the field how much will be the field it will be mu not by 4 pi this will be 2m by a cube this will be 2m by a cube everyone with me and what will be the potential on the axis the formula is mu not by 4 pi mu not by 4 pi m by a square m by a square that's the formula for potential so let's see one by one both the things if you talk about the total potential the total potential it will be potential due to this magnet plus the potential due to this horizontal magnet due to the vertical magnet this one the potential was just zero due to the horizontal magnet the potential was this So it was some mu not by 4 pi m by a square. So shouldn't the total potential be just mu not m divided by 4 pi a square? That is the first answer. That is the first answer for total potential. One guy didn't even contribute. Only the second guy's contribution was there. Now let's talk about field. Let's talk about field. You know what is the problem in field? You cannot just add them directly. Why? Because field is vector. the good thing was this was scalar this was a complete scalar so I, that's the reason i just added them but for field i cannot do that i will have to find the resultant this will be the net field this will be that net magnetic field so the net magnetic field will be the sum vector sum of the first magnet plus the second magnet plus the second magnet so magnitude wise magnitude wise it will be nothing but this square plus the other guy's square right this quantity square plus this quantity square do you notice many things are common mu not mu not 4 pi 4 pi m m a cube a cube so when you square it add take root 
those things which are common just bring it outside as it is bring it outside as it is what were those things mu naught m by 4 pi a q those are the things which are common is that right they will just come out as it is what will remain is this formula has only one m so this will have just one square and this formula has 2m that means this will have 2 square 2 square is 4 4 plus 1 is 5 hence inside you will have root of 5 so this will be mu naught m root 5 whole thing divided by 4 pi a cube so that is the net magnetic field at that point you can either get only this question or you can get only this question you won't get both in neat but i solved both the problems together just so that we have additional practice is that right loan i'm very good yep yes you got the potential too yes it's hard to type the answer i know i know Naveen. but you got the answer that is a big big thing if you understood that the fields are in different direction and you have to take vector addition that's a very brilliant thing if you are able to at least get to that point with enough practice obviously you will solve these kind of questions within one and a half minute or so moving on to the next on your screen look at this there is a magnet of some dipole moment it's free to rotate in a plane there is a field of this much teslas in the space the work done in taking the magnet from parallel direction to 60 degrees is how much from parallel direction to 60 degrees is how much i'll show you both the situations so you'll get an idea first it was parallel then you have taken it to 60 degrees like this your field was in the same direction just that magnetic moment has been changed direction wise so question is how much work is done well the logic is simple the work done is the change in the potential energy that means potential when it was at 60 degrees minus potential when it was at zero degree final minus initial if a spring changes the energy i have done some work in changing the energy if the magnet has changed the orientation it has changed its energy i have done work to change its energy so that's why work done is the change in the energy so energy at 60 will be minus mb cos 60 minus potential energy at zero will be minus mb cos zero so what will this be this will become minus mb cos 60 is half minus minus becomes plus cos zero is one so it will be plus mb so won't that work done just become observe minus mb by 2 plus mb will just become mb by 2 1 minus half is half oh now you just substitute that's all the magnetic moment is 2 into 10 to the power 4 magnetic field is 6 into 10 to the power minus 4 the whole thing is uh, divided by 2 2 to cancel 6 is there so that's it 6 joules should be the answer yep priyanka no naveen it is not b uh, you missed that two part i think you forgot to divide it by two answer is not 12 it is six joules if you make a mistake in decimals you might get it as 0.6 if you do something else you might get it as two joules also okay cool understood or clear oh perfect let's move ahead to the next question yes so let's go to the next thing yep i think yeah we have come to magnetic properties of materials yep so the different properties of materials we have come to that part because right now we know what magnetic field due to a magnetic material or sorry a bar magnet is now the next thing is to learn more such properties not just the magnetic field or energy there are so many things like permeability then you have susceptibility you have magnetic intensity intensity of magnetization all these things and how they are related to each other whatever things you see around you are having some type of magnetic characteristic and you will see the classification in a bit like how in electricity you have conductors insulators dielectrics same way in magnetism also you don't call it magnetic conductor or magnetic insulator there are different materials and each material has different characteristics that define that material and also when you try to magnetize something demagnetize something you are applying some external effect 
or a cause to change the parameters of that magnet you are trying to magnetize something have you ever noticed that if you keep a magnet close to some uh, screwdriver or some metallic object by mistake it is left in the drawer after many days suddenly you remove that pin or that metallic object you see that that pin can also attract other things basically that has got magnetized there are some characteristics induced in that have you noticed that yeah so we are going to learn these parameters we are going to learn these parameters if you have not experienced this just try it out at home take a magnet take a safety pin leave it with the magnet for a few days and then take out that safety pin and you will see that it will be able to attract other safety pins it has become magnetic in nature right you can try that out chalo let's study all the different magnetic parameters okay let's study magnetic parameters the first parameter that we are going to study is how external field induced field and the net field are related to each other say for example there is magnetic field being generated by somebody so i will call it as b not this is my external this is my external magnetic field then you have some material you have some material this is some magnetic material that external magnetic field happens to pass through that material happens to pass through that material the moment the moment that external field passes through this magnetic material you know what will happen immediately you will see that there will be an opposing or maybe assisting induced magnetic field opposing or assisting induced magnetic field this is induced magnetic field it could be in the same direction it could be in the opposite direction it depends on the material we'll come to that later on for now just remember there is an induced magnetic field inside the material so because of which you will see that the net magnetic field the net magnetic field this is the net magnetic net magnetic field will be different from your external magnetic field it will be different from the external magnetic field so this is how i'll write it down the net magnetic field will be the complete vector addition of your external field plus the induced field remember i have put a bar symbol so that's why there is a plus sign if i do not put bar and i only talk about magnitudes then it will be plus or minus depending on the directions of it depending on the directions of it so this is a very very important relationship that everybody must know the total magnetic field is the combined effect of external field and the induced field so this field can be more than this or less than this depending on whether they are in the same or in the opposite directions so i can give you both the cases i can give you both the cases if induced if induced okay if induced is in the first case let's say parallel to the external parallel to the external and in second case anti parallel to the external anti parallel to the external so in the first case when it is parallel then you will see that the net field will be just b not plus b induced but in the second case when it is anti parallel the net field will be b not minus b induced okay this is magnitude wise please understand this is the magnitude of that net field that we are talking about cool clear everybody clear till this point can we go ahead are you able to understand what is induced field external field and the net field and how they are all related to each other because i'm going to use the same symbols throughout now i'm going to use the same symbols throughout okay so the first parameter which is going to use these symbols is magnetizing field magnetizing field or magnetic intensity or magnetic 
intensity one and the same thing just two different ways of calling the same thing like some people say magnetic induction some people say magnetic field both are the same thing this is magnetizing field not magnetic field so be aware of the wordings used magnetizing field is the same as magnetic intensity and it's a vector quantity it's a vector quantity vector quantity and the symbol for that is basically h bar h bar and the formula for this magnetic intensity of the symbol for this particular magnetic intensity my dear students is that external field divided by the permeability of free space so this is the formula which you should remember direction wise whatever is the direction of b naught is also the direction of h bar you can also get the units of h very easily i will show that to you in a bit just imagine i give you an example i give you an example like this you have taken a solenoid okay what is this this is a solenoid you have passed some current through it and let's say inside you have placed some material you have placed some magnetic material and the question is how much is the field which is trying to magnetize it how much is the magnetizing field how much is the magnetic intensity on that material so the magnetic intensity which is basically h will be b naught by mu naught the magnetic field which is there inside that solenoid think about it i have already given you the formula the magnetic field created by a solenoid how much is it it's just mu naught n i so divide by mu naught mu naught mu naught cancels it is just n i so this is the magnetic intensity due to a solenoid number of turns per unit length into the current number of turns per unit length into the current is that right everybody got this everybody understood this point everybody understood how to solve the question so this is a field which is trying to magnetize that material it's an input given it's a cause given you are placing somebody inside something that something is trying to magnetize it so that is the magnetic intensity trying to magnetize it now look at this you will immediately pounce and tell me what is the unit n has the unit of per meter this turns per meter i is in amperes so hence the unit the unit of h will be nothing but ampere per meter that's all it will be just ampere per meter is that right how many of you got this give me a thumbs up come on guys everybody clear till this point i'm going to make it so simple for you after attending this class you will never ever leave any question from this chapter number one that's my promise number two you will get guaranteed four marks from this chapter and this is a chapter which you can do in one maximum two days so it's an easy kill easy kill although you might not get five questions or three questions from this but that one question guaranteedly is in your pocket just because of this okay then the next next parameter is intensity of magnetization intensity of magnetization intensity of magnetization the symbol for that is i that is also a vector quantity now this i very important this i has a formula b induced by mu naught what is this this is basically your b induced by mu naught instead of external instead of external it is induced so this is a vector quantity same as the direction of the induced field so you should remember this particular quantity now i know you guys are thinking sir what will be the unit of this okay think about it now the formula has field on the top permeability below formula for h also has permeability below and field on the top shouldn't the unit be the same obviously so this guy also has the same unit so it will be just ampere per meter nothing else it will still be ampere per meter next thing like sir this is confusing for me you know how many of you always get confused which is h 
which is I. Magnetizing field, magnetic field, magnetic induction, intensity of magnetization, magnetic intensity. Sir, crazy sir, what is this? I'll keep it simple. I'll keep it simple for all of you. Okay, do you want to make it simple? Do you want to make it simple? See, if I use terms like magnetic field or magnetic induction, what am I referring to? I am referring to the symbol B which is in basically Tesla, which is basically Tesla, correct? The moment I say, the moment I say intensity of magnetization, intensity of magnetization, intensity of magnetization. Do you see what is this phrase starting with? Isn't it starting with I? So I am referring to basically I. I am basically referring to I. So naturally you know what will happen? If I say magnetic intensity, magnetic intensity, instead of I, you rotate that symbol. If you rotate the symbol I, because I is not coming initially, it is coming later on. Rotate that symbol, what will I become? Won't it become H? Won't it become H? That's it, so easy. That's all. Is that clear, my dear students? Understood? So simple. You can never ever get confused with the symbols now and obviously with the formula. Yeah, unit wise, both of them are the same unit. Both of them, H and I are the same unit. But formula wise, they are completely different, but similar looking, similar looking. You can see it right over here. This was B by mu. This is also B by mu, but H is external by mu naught. This is induced by mu naught. This is induced by mu naught. Simple trick. Awesome. Awesome. Now, now, remember you had placed that material inside that external field. You had placed that material inside that external field. So that created some induced magnetic field. If it created induced magnetic field, meaning what? This ma material inside got magnetized. Maybe this got north polarity. Maybe this got south polarity. This material got magnetized. Agree or disagree? So it has got polarities. These are all induced magnetic fields, induced poles. So it will have its own magnetic moment. It will have its own magnetic moment. Right? So let me tell you one very interesting thing. The intensity of magnetization. If you don't want to write B induced by mu naught. If you don't want to write B induced by mu naught, no problems. You can also write it as... You can also write it as the magnetic moment and this entire thing will have some volume. This will have some volume. Let's say I can call it as V divided by V. So it's the magnetic moment per unit volume. That is also an alternative formula if these are given to you somehow. So please remember this formula as well. It's the magnetic dipole moment per unit volume. So I'll just write it over here. It's the magnetic, magnetic moment, magnetic moment per, per unit volume. Keep this in mind. Very, very important way of writing I. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead to the next one. Let's go ahead to the next one. So both H as well as I are done. Remember H is given. You are magnetizing it. The material gets magnetized. So I is what is being affected. What is induced. What happens to it because of the H. So H is the cause. Is the reason. And I is the effect. I is the effect. Is the outcome. It gets magnetized, it gets induced. So that's how you can remember these things. Everyone. Yep. Yes, we'll be doing separate PYQ sessions also very soon. Let me complete the major portion. Bacha, don't worry. Next one. Next one is susceptibility. Susceptibility. Symbol for that is this x in greek 
ओके ससेप्टेबिलिटी द फॉर्मूला फॉर ससेप्टेबिलिटी इज जस्ट डिवाइड आई विद हेच एक्स आई एच जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस फ्रेज एक्स आई एच दैट्स ऑल यू विल बी एबल टू रिमेंबर दिस फॉर्मूला एक्स आई एच इफ यू रिमेंबर दिस फॉर्मूला यू कैन easily write this susceptibility form over here now do you know do you remember that i and h both had the same units so numerator and denominator units will cancel if the units cancel that means it will become just a dimensionless quantity dimensionless dimensionless unitless quantity keep that in mind so susceptibility tells me on the numerator side how much it got magnetized and on the denominator side it tells me how much is the external magnetizing field so how susceptible it is if for a small h from outside it gets heavily magnetized it is very susceptible like it happens no you have used this word in common language sir that guy is very susceptible to you know small remarks also the teacher tells hey what are you doing the student feels so bad the student starts crying very susceptible the teacher scolding is h he got magnetized that is i that is the output that is the outcome induced so is very susceptible some students are there teacher is scolding teacher is hitting nothing happens they are laughing smiling ha 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 karke so the teacher scolding that h external thing is very high but hardly you got affected hardly anything got induced right so the susceptibility will be very less understand that so it tells you how easy it is to induce that magnetic field because of an external field that's what susceptibility is all right the next is permeability 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 of the medium which is mu subscript m remember permittivity what was the symbol remember permittivity what was the symbol permittivity was epsilon permeability is mu just like permittivity told me how much will the field be permitted in the medium how much will it be permitted because the moment the medium changes the field will change permeability is how much can the field lines penetrate how much permeable it is like you say in geography these rocks are permeable meaning if rain falls immediately the water seeps in and the you know the ground water rises the easily the water enters into the ground it's permeable it is impermeable means the rocks do not let the water go in the mud is very hard it does not let the water seep in and the ground water won't increase so easily so permeable means how easily can the field lines you know penetrate they can enter inside that medium and that value of mu of that medium is nothing but b total by the magnetizing field this is the net field this is h so another important formula right over here okay this is another important formula which you should uh, remember please keep this in mind this is the net field this is the net field if there is more field for a small input it is more permeable if there is less field for you know that external field then uh, i would say it is less permeable less penetrating that's what it is hello niharika yes ritigna in soil correct perfect now different mediums have different permeability for vacuum it will be 4 pi 10 to the power minus 7 for iron it will be different for wood it will be different for water it will be different each material has different medium or oh, sorry permeability so you define a term called as relative relative permeability relative permea ability very simple symbol is mu r it is a dimensionless quantity obviously it is dimensionless this is dimensionless right this relative permeability is permeability of the medium upon permeability of vacuum 
Remember, the value of mu naught happens to be 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 in SI units. So that is your relative permeability. Keep this in mind. Relative to vacuum, how permeable you are. That is relative quantity. That is dimensionless. Now, is there a relationship between all these variables that we have studied? The answer is yes. So let's find out the relationship between these variables. So relation, relation between, relation between x, mu r, or just mu m, and all these things. How are they related to each other? See, we start our discussion, we start our discussion with the external field, the external field plus the induced field, plus the induced field gives you the net field, gives you the net field. I just started my discussion with this formula itself. Your external field and how much the material got magnetized, that induced field together gives you the net field. Now, Let's write down the formula for this guy, this guy and this guy all separately. Starting off with B0. I think there is a formula for B0 and that is magnetic intensity. So H is nothing but B0 by mu0. So that means B0 is mu0 into H. Great. Is there a formula for B induced? Yes, there is. Remember I is nothing but B induced. I is here, I is here also, divided by mu naught. So that means B induced is mu naught into I. Okay, so if I substitute over here, mu naught into I, and over here, if I substitute mu naught into H, how about, how about, you know, taking certain things common? How about taking, you know, um, something's common maybe that will also help or maybe first we'll substitute the value of b oh is there a formula for b is there a formula for the total magnetic field which we have just studied in all these slides do you remember in all these slides this was b induced this was uh, sorry this was external field this was b induced then over here over here this was i by h this had b by h do you see this is the net field do you see this is the next net field? So why not use this formula? Mu is B by H. Mu is mu is your total B by H. So basically B is nothing but mu times of H. Perfect. So why not substitute that as well? Mu of that particular medium. This is mu of that particular medium. Now what do I do? Divide it. Divide it with H and also mu naught on both sides. Both sides, what you do, divide it with H, divide it with H, and also mu naught, and also mu naught. You know, because of that, what will happen? Observe carefully. This one, H, H will get canceled. Mu M by mu naught will remain. Here, you can see that mu naught, mu naught has just vanished. H by H is just one over here and over here I am left with I by H. I am left with I by H. What is I by H? That is nothing but that is nothing but susceptibility. I by H is nothing but susceptibility. Remember that? I just told you some time back. Oh, so we got a relationship. But wait a minute. I already know what this is. What this is? This is nothing but your relative permeability. This is nothing but your relative permeability. So that will be nothing but one plus the susceptibility. So this is your very important formula. Mu relative is one plus susceptibility. That is the derivation for that. You should know this derivation so that you can play around with these variables. You will never forget the formulas. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Great, great. Alvin, I'll let you know, Bacha. I'll let you know. Let's do some questions based out of this. Here is the first question coming up on your screen. Try to answer this. If the relative permeability of iron, relative permeability, relative number is 5,500, then its susceptibility is how much? Everybody should be able to answer this. Then how much is its susceptibility? Ani saying D. Come on, what about others? Mu 
relative is 1 plus susceptibility so 5 5 0 0 is 1 plus x so x is 5 4 9 9 exactly that is option d d for doctor d for doctor and looks like many doctors are there in the chats very good very good keep the top just one second guys Okay, cool. Let's go to the next question on your screen. The magnetic induction along the axis of an air cold solenoid is this much. When you place some iron core inside it, then the field becomes 1.5 times uh, uh, Tesla, 1.5 T. Then the relative permeability of iron core will be how much? Come on, think. Usual magnetic field formula inside the solenoid used to be mu naught ni but when some medium is present obviously this won't be mu naught this will be mu m ni and mu m is nothing but mu naught into mu relative and that is just ni so basically it is that old magnetic field into the relative permeability it is the old magnetic field into the relative permeability. The moment you add some material, the field inside will change. So it has become 1.5 Tesla and the old field was how much? It was basically 0 0.03 Tesla. That's it. So the relative permeability will be 1.5 by 0 0.03, which is 150 by 3, which is just 50. Is 50 there? Yes, that is the answer. How many of you wrote it? Very good, Priyanka. Very good, Bharatan. Awesomeness. Awesomeness. Proud of all of you. So, when you add the material, this mu naught will no longer be mu naught. It will be mu of the medium. And mu of the medium is mu naught into relative quantity. Just like how it happened with permittivity, dielectric constant and all of that. So, you get the answer. Very simple substitution. Let's go to the next question. The susceptibility is 0.5. Then the relative permeability is, okay, come on, reverse question. Hello, Harita. Yep, come on. The relative permeability is asked. Susceptibility is given. This can't get any simpler. Susceptibility and relative permeability, 1 plus x. So, susceptibility is 0 0.5 susceptibility is 0 0.5 so this will be 1.5 that's all where is 1.5 c for captain shreyas how many of you have written capto very good naveen very good sri Lanka. no it is not minus 0 0.5 be careful yes it is c very good attractive status very good vadanjani awesomeness perfect moving on to the next question on your screen there is a domain of a ferromagnetic don't worry what domain is right now but just imagine there is some region where the, the uh, there is a cube of side length one micrometer okay just imagine there is a cube of one micrometer okay this is side it contains so many atoms and each atom has a dipole moment of so much so each atom has some basically dipole moment like this each atom has a dipole moment like this so together they will produce a total dipole moment m and then the question is the magnetization of the domain basically i is asked what is the value of i we all remember the value of i it happens to be the total magnetic moment upon the total volume i just told you i gave you this formula total magnetic moment upon the total volume but the total magnetic uh, moment will be number of atoms multiplied by magnetic moment of each atom because each atom will add up to the magnetic moment they will all add up to give you this total magnetic moment upon the volume volume will be basically the side cube so just have to substitute the values i believe nothing else is there so it contains 8 into 10 to the power 10 then magnetic moment of the atom is 9 into 10 to the power minus 24 
9 into 10 to the power minus 24. The side length is 1 micrometer. Cubing it will be 10 to the power minus 6 whole cube. You can see 9 8 is a 72. So it will be 72 into 10 to the power something. But I think 7.2 is given. So you adjust the decimal and write it as 7.2 into 10 to the power something. So check it out. Compare the powers 8, 9 is a 72 guys. Everything has 72 in the thing. You have no other option but to actually sit and multiply the powers of 10. 10 to the power minus 24, 10 to the power 10 will become 10 to the power minus 14. Here you will have 10 to the power minus 18. So this will become 10 to the power basically minus 4. So is that right? So this will become 10 to the power minus 3 I believe. So 10 to the power, uh, uh, sorry, yeah is that right? Uh, I think we made a mistake here, one second. This will be minus 14, this will be minus 18. So this will become 10 to the power plus 4, sorry. And because I want it as 7.2, so that's why I'll just put it as 10 to the power uh, 5. That's it. So that should be option A. Yes, it is option A. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. So in this particular question, you have to ignore certain things like ignore the word domain, ferromagnetic, not necessary. Just imagine there is a cube of some side. It is made of small, small atoms. Each atom has its own dipole moment. So what will be the total dipole moment? What will be the total dipole moment? Number of atoms into dipole moment of each atom. What is the dipole moment of each atom? This one. So number of atoms which is 8 into 10 to the power 10 into this which is 9 into 10 to the power minus 24 per unit volume volume means side cube volume of a cube is side cube so side length is 1 micrometer so cube that micro means 10 to the power minus 6 cube it it will become 10 to the power minus 18 now 8 9s are 72 you can adjust the powers you will see it will be 10 to the power minus uh, sorry 10 to the power plus 4 shift the decimal it will become 10 to the power 5 is that okay? That calculation part, Adiba, you do it. Calculation part, you do it. Cool. Perfect. Chalo. Let's go on to the next one. The coercivity of a bar magnet. Forget what coercivity is. Just think it is basically the magnetizing field which is required. Think of it that way. In order to demagnetize it, it is placed inside a solenoid. What current should be passed through the solenoid? So this value is nothing but the magnetic magnetic intensity magnetic intensity which is needed to demagnetize it to demagnetize it to demagnetize it that is what this value is given because i want to demagnetize it we all know what is the formula for h h is nothing but b naught by mu naught for a solenoid for a solenoid B naught is mu naught N i divided by mu naught. Mu naught mu naught cancels. It will become N i. So it will be number of turns per unit length into the current. That is basically your H. Now this H is already given to you. How much is it given? It is given as 4000. Is number of turns given? Yes. 60. Is the length given? Yes. It is 12 centimeters. That means it is 0.12 meters into the current. So now do the... Uh, math over here 12 goes with 65 times but because of the decimal it will become 500 this 0 this 0 this 0 this 0 cancels 5 cancels with 48 times so basically the current will be 8 amperes 8 amperes is option c yes that's the correct one great is that okay so you need to selectively learn and ignore few things in the question because or else you will be like my god sir what is this this term, that term, sir, ferromagnetic. Don't worry. Just have to visualize. Okay, there is one cube. Achha, cube is made of atoms. Atoms has magnetic moment. So total magnetic moment I can find. If I divide it with volume, that's it. My job is done. That will be intensity. Because intensity was total magnetic moment per unit volume. In this question, the question said you have to demagnetize it. And the magnetizing field required is already given. That is the meaning of coercivity which will be uh, learning in the next part. So if I know the solenoid is having certain turns, certain current, whatever, or certain length, I can use the formula for field of a solenoid to find H in terms of those terms. 
and then substitute the values to get the answer. Cool? So these problems are actually very simple. Once you get used to it, trust me, there is nothing stopping you from getting those four marks in the actual examination. Chalo. So let's start with the three different kinds of materials uh, which are there in our real world. One is diamagnetic, one is paramagnetic, one is ferromagnetic. Just to give a simple idea of how these three things are, imagine the external field is like the teacher in your class. Imagine the external field is like the teacher in your class. Students are there. Students are like those atoms, molecules inside the material. Usually when the teacher is not there, what is everybody doing? One student is looking here. One student is looking there. One student is looking like this. One student is looking down. So every student is looking randomly anywhere. So the direction in which you look is like the magnetic moment, north south pole. Think of small small bar magnets, one bar magnet like this, one bar magnet like this, one bar magnet like this, one bar magnet like this. So all these are all the people, all the all the pandus and champas in the classroom are like small small magnets. So each magnet is oriented randomly. So the total magnetic moment, the total magnetic moment of the class will be zero. Yes or no? Total magnetic moment of the uh, classroom will be zero because everybody is random. One is looking here, one is looking there. So it will all cancel out. But the moment teacher comes in, the person who was looking here might look here, will come back. The person who was looking there will come back. The person who was looking here will come back. They will all focus their attention on the teacher. Yes, that's what happens in your usual class. They will all be like, okay, teacher has come. Okay, teacher has come. Let's all sit like this. So all their magnetic moments are aligned in that one direction. Okay. They got magnetized. There is North Pole and South Pole. There is a net magnetic moment. The teacher again goes out. Again, students start screaming. They start running around. One is looking here. One is looking there. Gone. This behavior is called paramagnetic behavior. What is this behavior called? Paramagnetic. The moment outside thing comes, they are aligned. Hmm. We have to look here. We have, come on everybody, look at the teacher. Teacher is out, gone. One is looking here, one is looking there. Back to their original nonsense. That is paramagnetic. What is that? Paramagnetic. Now, imagine a classroom where the teacher comes in. The moment teacher comes, instead of looking at the teacher, the students look behind. Teacher is there in the front. These kids, ultra legend pro max kids, they are looking behind. Teacher is like, hey, what is wrong with you? Why are you looking away from me? They are looking away. The teacher goes out. The teacher goes out. They are again back to their original nonsense. One here, one there, one there, one here. Random. So they are opposite to the external field. They are opposing the external field. That behavior is called diamagnetic behavior how many of the classrooms are diamagnetic let me see how many of the classrooms are diamagnetic how many of you are para i am coming to ferro now i know you are like sir what is ferro now imagine now pandu champa are no longer individuals they are in a group green house yellow house pink house red house white house whatever some six, seven groups are there. If you are in a group, let's say greenhouse, they will all decide. We are going to look here. All the members of greenhouse are looking here. Yellow house, all the members are looking here. Red house, all the members are looking here. Violet house, all the members are looking here. It's like groups. Groupism is there. Whatever one person does, everybody follows the same thing. These groups are called as domains. What are they called? Domains. The moment teacher comes, the moment teacher comes, say for example, the yellow house was looking towards the teacher. Yellow house was looking towards the teacher. You know what they will do? They will catch hold of that pandu which is there in the other house. They will be like, hey, you come in my house. See, I am in the direction of where the teacher is. They will catch one person from greenhouse, violet house, this house, that house. They will increase their group. They will give them their t-shirt. Hey, wear my yellow t-shirt. Everybody came into that group. They will expand their group. They will expand their domain. 
when the teacher goes that's it these people can't change their color they have become yellow means gone now they are there now everybody is looking there so you will see there is magnetism retained even after the external field is removed these kids are still uh, you know pointing in one direction even after the teacher went out so there is something which is retained that it has become permanently magnetized that is ferromagnetic behavior that's why you use ferromagnetic materials in making permanent magnets so i guess most of you will be para most of you will be para you are the susceptible one miki oh my god don't be so susceptible miki you should always be strong your susceptibility should be like zero not zero as such you should get affected obviously you have a heart you have a brain but you should not be very susceptible also because it is not good for you in long run and you are going to be doctors you have to be emotionally strong you have to give motivation to other patients who are going to come so you need to be mentally emotionally strong okay so let's start writing down all the important things in this case uh, in case of diamagnetic uh, materials it is basically weakly weakly magnetized magnetized uh, temporarily temporarily in opposite direction to external field to external field it is weakly magnetized opposite so that's why you will see that your net magnetic field will be external field minus b induced minus b induced and this b induced is very small as compared to that external field don't expect this to be comparable if this is 5 tesla or 1 tesla this will be 0.001 tesla 0.02 tesla it's opposite that's all you should know okay and like i said it is temporarily so that means that means if b not is removed if b not is removed b induced immediately becomes zero it is a temporary magnet it is not a permanent magnet it is a temporary magnet not a permanent in case of paramagnetism it is weakly magnetized weakly magnetized okay temporarily temporarily in the direction of the external field in the direction of the external field in the same direction so because of which you can say that the total field is external field plus the induced field but needless to say induced field is small than the external field so if this is one or two teslas this will be 0.05 tesla 0.06 tesla like that so if the old field was one tesla this might become 1.005 tesla something like that it will become slightly more here it becomes slightly less keep that in mind and again over here also this is temporary phenomena if if b not is removed if external field is obviously removed you will immediately see that the induced field will become zero induced field will become zero it is a temporary magnet in this case in case of ferromagnetic it is strongly this is going to be strongly magnetized strongly magnetized uh, and this is a permanent phenomena permanently permanently in the direction in the direction of your external field in the direction of your external field keep this in mind and here i will again say net field will be external field plus the induced field obviously the induced field is much much stronger than your external field that's what you will see it's comparable okay and another important thing over here even when even if b not is removed even if b not is removed you will see b induced is not zero that means it is a permanent magnet it is a permanent magnet keep this in mind very very important okay let's go to the next slide 
all these pointers uh, will be available to you later on once the class is over don't worry in the form of pdf okay don't worry you will be getting it in the pdf form Chalo. next thing is examples of each kind of material which is the example of a diamagnetic material like you have uh, water water is a diamagnetic material even h2 right hydrogen gas is your diamagnetic material your common salt nacl that is also a diamagnetic material even diamond is a diamagnetic material all these are basically examples of your diamagnetic material keep this in mind sometimes they might give you in mass the following or just as a theory question uh, in paramagnetism you have aluminium magnesium manganese potassium right sodium all these are examples of paramagnetic materials paramagnetic materials similarly for ferromagnetic materials ferro fe cobalt nickel right all these are examples of ferromagnetic materials write all these examples down at least few times so that it is there in your head keep this in mind next important thing talking about the relative permeability and susceptibility all these things for paramagnetic you will see for paramagnetic you will see that the susceptibility is a small positive number and the relative permeability relative permeability is slightly more than one but in case of diamagnetic material the susceptibility is small negative number and the relative permeability is slightly less than one so if relative permeability is like 0 0.6 0 0.7 like that it is diamagnetic if relative permeability is 1.2 2.13 like that then it is a paramagnetic material but for ferromagnetic you will see that the susceptibility is large positive number it's a large positive number and the relative permeability is much much larger than one like 1000 200 700 that's how large these values are for ferromagnetic material keep this in mind okay all these are standard things which you must 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 know guys next is the graphs next is the graphs very very important graphs okay so let's say for example uh, this is your external field b naught this is your external field and on the y-axis is your induced field how much field got induced how much field basically got induced very interesting behavior observe this very interesting behavior starting off with diamagnetic in case of diamagnetic when you increase the field the induced field also increases but not in the same direction in the opposite direction so if b naught is positive b induced is negative so you will see the graph goes like this the graph basically goes like this my dear students you understand why it is going in the fourth quadrant when external field is that way induced field is opposite so it is negative so that's why it has gone below very nice but if you remove the external field then it will just come back to its original point that means it will be zero this is exactly what i told if b naught is removed b induced becomes zero so if you remove b naught it will come back to the same point that means it has lost all its characteristics of magnetism it is no longer magnetized in case of paramagnetic material in case of paramagnetic material when you apply external field it will get magnetized also in the same direction so the graph will be like this so if you magnetize it it will go here if you demagnetize it i mean remove the external field it will come back to zero because it is a temporary magnet it is temporary magnet the only difference happens in the ferromagnetic materials you apply external field it gets magnetized and it is generally not a straight line it is generally not a straight line you remove the external field you will see it will come over here 
it will come over here basically it has retained its property it has retained its property do you see that even when external field is zero it has still retained the induced field so that is the difference between ferromagnetic material graph para and diamagnetic graph very very important again keep this in mind perfect very good uh, we do not have official information attractive status as soon as there is an official information about the syllabus the pattern anything else I definitely will be coming up on the channel for now there is no such official notification next is the graph of susceptibility with temperature how does susceptibility change with temperature susceptibility we know for we know that for diamagnetic materials that zeta this uh, x is a small negative number so it will be below the temperature axis and it is found that it is independent of the temperature even if you heat it or cool it the diamagnetic nature won't change so that's why you will see it's a constant graph it's a negative value and it is basically a constant that means it is independent of temperature independent of temperature independent of temperature the changes happen in paramagnetic material when you increase the temperature the susceptibility becomes less they become less susceptible so you will see as temperature increases susceptibility decreases in fact this is called as your curie's law for paramagnetic material where the susceptibility is inversely proportional to the value of the temperature this is your curie's law it is inversely proportional more temperature less susceptible less temperature more susceptible ferromagnetic has a very different interesting behavior it does not change its susceptibility with temperature until one point until one temperature called as curie's temperature so it is very very high remember that it is very very high hardly it changes until one point until one point and that point is called as curie temperature because after this temperature the ferromagnetic material loses the ferro property and it becomes and it becomes a paramagnetic material so it enters the paramagnetic zone it enters the basically paramagnetic zone after that temperature it becomes a paramagnetic material over here here it was a ferromagnetic material you can see it was a large positive number after this it becomes a small x so it becomes a paramagnetic material is that right so that temperature is called as the curie temperature where a ferromagnetic material when heated so when you heat a magnet you will see that after some time it will lose its property because it has become paramagnetic so never heat a magnet above the curie temperature never heat a magnet about the curie temperature because it will lose all its magnetic properties it's gone is that right okay chalo let's start with some questions now and before solving those questions we'll see one last curve because that is the end of the chapter by the way so no point of giving break it will hardly continue for more 5 to 10 minutes i think hysteresis very very interesting graph imagine this is your external this is your external field and this is your induced field this is your induced field if i if i give some external field for a uh, not for para for a ferromagnetic material as i increase the external field the induced field also will increase it is generally not a straight line so you will see it is like this if i leave it at this point the induced field stays there but if i remove the external field the moment i remove that particular external field okay so i've just removed it that's all you will see you will see that it will come over here the induced field will be retained so this particular thing is called as how much has been retained or retentivity how much has been retained or what is the retentivity how much has been retained when external field has been removed okay still it is magnetized now i want to demagnetize it if i want to demagnetize it what i will do i will reverse 
I will reverse the external field. That means B naught, which was positive, will now be negative. So this magnetism which was induced will slowly disappear and come to zero. So I'll have to reverse the magnetic field so much that the induced field comes down to zero value. I have basically coerced it, coerced it to become zero. Coerce means force. I have forced it to remove the magnetic field. So that is coercivity or coerced into uh, de getting demagnetized. So the induced field becomes zero when you apply sufficient opposite direction magnetic field. So it has come back to nothing. It's zero. Now if you want, you can again magnetize it. But you magnetize it in the opposite direction by applying more negative field. So you magnetize it further. It becomes more magnetized but in the opposite direction then what you do you are like okay let me remove that external field because it has got magnetized in the opposite direction so you remove it again it will retain some value again it will retain some value in the other direction in the opposite direction now the magnet has been reversed it has retained some characteristics i want to again demagnetize it so i need to apply positive I need to apply positive or I need to again reverse the direction of the external field. So again I reverse the direction of the external field. Maybe it goes like this. And this is the amount I need to coerce it. This is the amount I need to coerce it to basically again get magnetized in the original direction. Now again I can sit and magnetize this. Again I can sit and magnetize this and maybe I again reach over here. Okay, again I reach over here. If you notice, the going and coming paths are different. It's like one-way traffic. You cannot come and go via the same road. If I magnetize, I go like this. Demagnetize, I go like this. Magnetize, I go like this. Demagnetize, I come different way. I again demagnetize and magnetize. I go in different paths. So, when the coming and going paths are not the same, that is called as hysteresis. So, this is the hysteresis graph of a ferromagnetic material. Remember, for para and diamagnetic material there is no such hysteresis formed here because the going and coming paths are same the going and coming paths are same only for ferro the going and coming paths are different that's why you get a hysteresis a loop is what you say for a ferromagnetic material okay keep this in mind one last thing that you need to know in this particular graph is whatever that hysteresis curve okay might be the area right that area remember is proportional to the energy loss is proportional to the energy loss so if it is a very wild graph very big graph more energy is lost in that entire process if it is a very thin graph like a leaf okay if it is a very thin graph very less area then it will have very less energy loss Okay, keep that thing in mind that the area is proportional to the energy loss in that particular hysteresis process. Okay, so let's start doing some questions. You will get a complete idea. Here's the first question. So for a ferromagnetic material in external field, the magnetic domains increase in size, decrease in size, may increase or decrease in size have no relation with the field. Very simple. Swami, you will get it on the uh, telegram. Just join the telegram group which is there in the description box. Yep, just join the telegram group which is there in the description box. Cool. So what do you think? Ferromagnetic material. Well, I don't know how that domain is pointing. See, if I apply the external field like this, then the domain size will increase. But if I apply the magnetic field in this scenario when the domain is pointing in some other direction then the domain size will decrease so here it decreased whereas in the first case it increased so it all depends whether the domain is aligned or not aligned with the external field so it depends so hence the answer will be option c hence the answer will be option c yep it is not b it is not c d it is not a it is c depends it may increase it may decrease okay moving on next question this was a cet question 
मेडिकल एंट्रेंस सबिलिटी ऑफ अ मैग्नेटिक मटीरियल इज फोर हंड्रेड वॉट इज द टाइप ऑफ द मटीरियल डाय मैग्नेटिक पैरा मैग्नेटिक फेरो मैग्नेटिक फेरो इलेक्ट्रिक वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड लुक एट द वैल्यू ऑफ सबिलिटी दिस एक्स इज मच मच लार्जर दैन वन सो वेन डज दिस हैपन इट ओनली हैपन फॉर फेरो मैग्नेटिक मटीरियल यस फेरो मैग्नेटिक ऑप्शन सी इज करेक्ट If you had written the CET exam, 100% you would have got this answer correct. Very good, guys. Moving on to the next question. Curie temperature is the temperature above which ferro becomes para, para becomes radia, para becomes ferro, ferro becomes radia. Very confusing if you read the statement. Don't look at the statement. Think in your mind what it should be and then match the answer. Curie temperature is the temperature above which where Does it change? Ferromagnetic material becomes into paramagnetic material. Exactly. So it should be option number A only. Very good. Very good, Kavin, Vedanshini, Navin. Awesome, Nandini. Awesome, Ritinka. Very good. Kudos, kudos, Priyanka. Next question. Curie's law. Remember, Curie's temperature is for ferro. Curie law is for para. All right. Is what magnetic susceptibility is inversely proportional to temperature it is inversely proportional to the square root of temperature it is proportional to the absolute temperature it does not depend on the temperature what is curie's law curie's law is used for paramagnetic material and it says that x is inversely proportional to the temperature yes this is for paramagnetic materials x is inversely proportional to the temperature so that is option a of course very good proud of all of you giving the correct answers next one there is a field which is applied on a paper which is initially directed from left to right when there is a ion soft ion placed in the field parallel to it then the force that means the magnetic field lines of force is magnetic field passing through it will be best represented by first think the soft ion whether it is a para ferro or diamagnetic material based on that think whether the field will increase or decrease accordingly you will be able to identify which graph will be correct which diagram will be correct like you can see soft ion soft ion is a ferromagnetic material so the net magnetic field will be more than the external field it will be more than the external field that means it will basically become stronger inside the material it will become stronger inside the material so which means what this should be the correct graph option uh, b yes option b should be the correct graph very good you know uh, uh, which will be the graph for diamagnetic material imagine this was not soft ion this was given to be water water is a diamagnetic material so if it was given to be water then the graph will be c no no not d it will be c understand that no 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 it is not d it is c it will become weaker do you see the field lines are repelling the field lines are repelling yep so it will become slightly weaker that will be c for diamagnetic perfect so that completes the chapter i have kept some homework questions for all of you and all of them are pyqs for you to practice this is your first pyq take a screenshot of it try to solve it after the class and paste the answers uh, after the class is over in the comment section this is your second question this was asked in need 2020 all these are pyqs i'm pretty sure you will be able to crack it guys this is the next question jipmer question take a screenshot paste the answers in the comment section after the lecture is over this was a need 2019 question assertion reason type again please take a screenshot or pause the video solve it and type the answer in the comments so these are your homework questions for you today okay all pyqs this chapter is done and dusted okay you are four marks are guaranteed if you spend this one two days just studying this chapter making notes solving the pyqs and doing all the exercise problems okay your chapter is done and dusted i hope you have smashed the like button and also hit the subscribe button in case you haven't done that show your support because more lectures are about to be followed next le next lecture will be on electromagnetic induction okay so gear up for that do not miss that class because that's a very important chapter expect anywhere from 8 marks to 16 marks from that chapter alone yeah electromagnetic induction 
okay so you can get two questions to maximum four questions uh, in the neat exam bye bye have a great time thank you so much for putting up all your comments and smashing the like button take care this is captain shreya signing off